Hey everyone, Mr. Newman here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about graphing stories. This is where I give you a situation and you have to sketch an outline of the graph. A lot of times there are certain points that have to get hit. So I'm gonna give you, uh, show you how to do that. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna describe the graph and then we're actually gonna sketch it. So notice this is our temperature of a batch of cookies that's been taken out of the oven. And this is gonna happen over time, all right? So I'm gonna put time on the x-axis. Anytime time is one of the variables, it's always gonna be on the x-axis because it's the input, and the temperature is gonna be the output. So, cookies are gonna start out hot because they are just taken out of the oven. So that means our temperature is gonna be really, really high up there. So I'm gonna make a mark really high on the y-axis. Notice that I'm starting at time is zero, so that's the beginning, right? This side right here, that's the beginning of ta the, the time in our situation, and this on the right is the end of the time, okay? So, temperature is really uh, hot, time is at the beginning. As the cookies cool off, they're gonna cool off very quickly at first. That means temperature's gonna drop a whole lot in a short amount of time, okay? And I'm, notice I made points to, to follow along there. Then the cookies are gonna cool off more slowly later on, and I don't know if you guys noticed that, but uh, whenever you, if you ever bake or cook or something, the food will stay warm for a long time. It doesn't stay hot for a long time. It, it cools off quickly at first, and it gets uh, cooler slowly later on. So we're gonna keep going down a little bit slower, a little bit slower, until it gets kind of horizontal, flattens out. That horizontal there, you guys, that you can make a dotted line, that is room temperature, because your cookies aren't gonna get, become ice cubes just because they're sitting out. They're gonna get cool all, cooled off all the way down to room temperature. Now, we just made the dots. We also need to connect the line. So there I go, connecting all the dots. And the reason we need to connect the dots is because if I don't connect the dots, then there's no temperature between these, or no, uh, yeah, no temperature between these two moments in time. It's like the cookies, their temperature stops existing, and that's not true. We call this a continuous graph uh, because the dots are always connected. And whenever time is the x value, I'm going to say this, it's almost always continuous. Okay, there are few situations where it's discrete, but almost always continuous. All right, so the, just to recap for the steps that we did, I want you to jot these notes down. First, we labeled the axes. Okay, you always need to start with that. Then, we plotted the points that we wrote down. All right, and make sure you do the start and the end points, but also the ones in the middle. And notice, I wrote down sentences to give me ideas of each one where they should be, okay? Lastly, we connected the dots because this, in this situation, it's continuous and all these all these graphing stories, almost all of them will be continuous functions, okay? All right, let's do another one here. Uh, we're gonna do the temperature of a chicken cooking in the oven. Now, our time is gonna go this way. We're gonna start out at first taking the uh, chicken out of the refrigerator, okay? So, right here, uh, the y-axis is temperature. The first thing, it starts off very cold if we pull it out of the refrigerator. So I'm gonna make the point very low on the graph but all the way to the left because that's the starting time. All right, next the chicken begins to heat up because once you put it in the oven, it's gonna get hotter and hotter. So it's actually gonna heat up pretty quickly at first, so I'm gonna make the points go up as time goes on to the right. And then the chicken cooks at a very hot temperature for a while. All right, so it doesn't keep getting hotter the whole time. It gets up to a certain temperature and it stays at that temperature while it's in the oven. So I'm gonna do that by making time continue on, on to the right, but I'm not gonna keep increasing the temperature because it's already reached the temperature of the oven. So, those three points, uh, I wanna also label a few things. First of all, this is the refrigerator temperature, and this is the start, starting time, okay? So the refrigerator temperature is where we started. And then this is the oven temperature, and we'll mark this time as the ending time, okay? So notice we need to connect the dots again, and we connect the dots, and it goes up and then to the right. And it, right here, it becomes a horizontal line at that point. All right. For uh, number three, uh, we're gonna do a child using a slide at the park. First, I want you to sketch a slide. It doesn't have to look exactly like mine, get little handlebars up there. But we wanna talk about where the child is, and this is just gonna help us visualize it. So I'm gonna sketch a child. Child uh, starts off on the ground, starts climbing the ladder, Climbs up to the top, stands at the top for just a second, and then slides on down. I get to watch Benji and Daniel do this all the time. So much fun. All right, so number one, we're gonna start 
on the ground. So, oh, make sure you label your axes, distance from the ground, and the time. So step one, we labeled our axes. Um, notice that, uh, again, we're using time, but I've looked at the problem that said graph the child's distance from the ground. That gives me my y-axis. And our distance from the ground at the beginning is zero. So I'm going to make a point right there. And I'm going to put a little one there so you have that labeled. Uh, number two, the child's going to climb up slowly. Notice this, that the uh, children go down slides way faster than they go up them, and we need to represent that on the graph here. So uh, what's going to happen is the points are going to go up very, very slowly because most children can't climb ladders super, super quickly. At least they can't climb them as quickly as they go down them. So notice time went on, a lot of time went on, and we went up very slowly. Okay. You can also see that because those points don't make a very steep line. They make kind of a, a shallower or non-steep line. All right, number three, the child's at the top. They're going to stay at the top for just a second. I'm going to make a few points there. And this is a horizontal because the child's distance, uh, their, their height distance from the ground, is not going up or down at that point. It's just staying level. Okay. Um, then the child hops down, down the slide, slides on down, and they go down very, very quickly, at least compared to how, how slowly they climb. And so here, we're gonna make that a very steep line down. Those dots form a very steep line because of the word quickly, all right? Now, look at this graph for her. We're gonna do one more, one more thing about this, but I want you to look at the overall shape of this. Notice how it does not look like the slide. A lot of people get this and they make a sketch like this because that is the sketch of a slide. This means that the child's climbing up the ladder very quickly and sliding down the slide very, very slowly. I'm not saying that can't happen, but your typical slide, that does not happen, all right? So, uh, see, that was step four. Last step here, step five, the child lands on the ground and stands up, but they're still on the ground. So we're just gonna make one point down there on the ground. Last thing we have to do is we have to connect the dots and notice that, again, the shape of the slide is not the same as what's happening over time, okay? So I want to cross that one out. It does not look like the shape of the slide. Instead, I considered carefully, all right, this is a slow increase and that is a fast decrease. All right, last thing here we're gonna do, you guys, I want to uh, talk about this situation on the back here. Uh, Kindley decides to ride his bike from his house to Bennett's house. We're gonna describe the behavior. And you notice on the y-axis, that's the distance from Kindley's house, okay? all the way till the very top would be at Bennett's house. So Kindley decides to ride his bike from his house. That means the starting point is gonna be at zero, all right? Then when he starts out, he takes his time, okay, taking his time, riding at a moderate pace, that's going slowly. So if it's not very fast, that means it's not gonna be very steep when we sketch it, all right? Uh, he sees his friend Manessa and stops to talk to him for a few minutes. He stops, that means He's not moving anywhere, but time is still going on. So just like before, when the child stops at the top of the slide, those points and the line needs to keep going to the right, even though he's not going anywhere. There's no change in distance, but time keeps going on. That makes a horizontal line. All right, step four, same pace. The same slope, uh, same pace as before. That means the same slope as on number two. Okay, not very fast, so it's not very steep, but try to make those, try to make that steepness the same steepness. Lastly, he says he forgot his cell phone and he rides back home really quickly. Two things here. First of all, back home means he turned around. So instead of going up and distance is getting further from home, we need to draw the slope down where the distance is getting closer to home. And then he said really quickly, that means it needs to be very steep. So you need to do both of those things. It needs to slope down. Number part five needs to slope down and needs to be very steep. Number six, he grabs the phone. That means he was at, had to be at phone, right? He got home. At home was the, uh, is when the distance from home is zero, so that line at that point needs to touch the x-axis. Needs to go all the way down and touch the x-axis. At least one point needs to be down there. Last thing, he says he rides as fast as he can. That sounds like he went, uh, went even faster than on part five. So for number seven, you need to make this as fast as he can. That needs to be even steeper then part five. And it says he got to Bennett's house, to Bennett's house. That means it ends all the way at the top because that's all the way as far as way, and probably as far away as possible. All right, go ahead and I want you guys to try to graph this based on 
what all the descriptions we just talked about and bring that to class graphed okay i may have you take that out and i may come around and check it for a grade so go ahead and take that out thank you very much for watching